Welcome to the uh, to seminar today on the design of cold form steel exterior wall connections. I'm very happy to be here with you today and thank you for joining us. So today uh, we are really just talking about the connection of the cold form steel to the base building structure. Uh, we are not going to necessarily talk about the internal connections uh, within the exterior walls themselves. Um, it turns out there's uh, enough information to be talked about uh, just getting to the connections um, between the studs and the uh, base building. So we're going to talk about the code required loading and the building movements that the exterior walls need to be able to accommodate. We're going to talk about our typical wall framing configurations, uh, the loading on these different uh, connections and these different framing configurations. And then we're going to talk it into the uh, specific design of these connections, whether they're engineered, um, more in the engineered than the proprietary, but we will touch on the proprietary a bit. Uh, a little note about uh, some of the terminology that, that I'll be using. Um, one, I, I tend to talk about um, cold form framing as a light gauge steel. So, um, so you may hear me refer to that. Uh, really, I mean the same thing. Uh, cold form is, is basically equal to light gauge in, in, in my uh, view here on this presentation. Um, also, gauge versus mills, um, even though I show all my drawings as uh, or requires the framing in mills on all of my drawings, and I have done that for many years, uh, I still tend to verbally use the, um, the gauge designation um, as it's just something that's more uh, common for me. So, um, so I will tend to use the gauges, but um, I, I do uh, definitely put, use the mills when I'm um, calling out stuff on my drawings. So. Let's get going here. So what we're going to talk about loading wise, um, just a quick overview. There's dead load, uh, there's potentially live load that we have to accommodate, wind load, and um, of course uh, in certain areas um, of the United States there's a seismic load. So the dead load that we're looking at is, uh, is basically the self weight of the wall itself. So how much the wall weighs itself, and, and that is the loading we talk about when we're talking about the dead load from the wall self weight. And this can vary significantly. Uh, if you have a metal panel finish, you could be talking about the walls weighing 10 pounds per square foot, versus if you have a four inch brick finish, you could be talking about the walls weighing 50 pounds per square foot. So um, that's a five time difference that, uh, that can occur. So it's a pretty significant. Uh, another dead load that we may have to consider is if the uh, wall framing does not allow for the building structure to uh, move vertically. And so basically if there's no gap between the structure and the framing, if you're in a kind of a four to four situation like is shown here, then um, any load that is uh, any dead load that's put onto the structure after the wall framing is um, locked in, is going to actually load those wall studs. So if you do, it doesn't necessarily happen a lot, um, especially out here on the West Coast, but if you do ever have that condition, uh, you do need to start considering what the dead loads are for the building. Likewise, with the live loads on the building, um, if you have live loads on your floor and you don't have uh, that gap uh, that allows for that differential movement, you um, also will have potentially have live loads that you need to consider. And they are additive as you go um, down the structure. So, um, so it can become quite significant. So in general, um, we release the uh, interior uh, or you know, interior, <laughs> we're talking about exterior today. Uh, in general, we, we try not to lock in the um, exterior wall framing so that it's not supporting the um, exterior building because you're designing the rest of the building system um, to take that. Wind loading. Um, so for the exterior walls, uh, we are using ASC 87-10, um, and that's true whether you're under the 2012 IBC or the 2015 IBC, or if you're out here in California, if you're in the 2013 CBC, uh, or even the upcoming um, 2016 CBC, we're, we're all still on ASC 7-10. Uh, so it's chapter 30 is the components and cladding. Um, so that's the loads we're using, not the main wind force resistance system uh, loads. The corner wind pressures, this is something important to note, is that the corner wind pressures can be higher. And when you're in a smaller, shorter building, less than 60 feet, it's about a 30% increase. That's not necessarily a big deal. 
When you're in taller structures, though, those corner wind pressures can be um, 200% higher. 